Today I'm going to show you how to replace a water pump on a BMW 3 Series or any vehicle with the M52 or M54 engine. This is the water pump right here and you can see it has a rubber gasket here and this is the impeller end right here. It's belt driven so the belt with the pulley is what's going to drive the impeller to circulate the coolant through the engine. A couple things that can fail, especially on some earlier pumps, the impeller would separate and then you would get no coolant flow through the engine. You can get a leak from this gasket right here or you can get an internal leak which will show up at this little area here. There's a little weep hole right on the side over here and you can get coolant running out of that area there. Another failure I've seen is the shaft, this end right here, which drives the impeller can actually fail and get cocked to the side. I've seen that cause some damage. I've seen the belts actually come flying off and if you have an automatic transmission with the mechanical fan it can cause some damage because the fan can come apart. I've seen a couple of hoods with dents in them. Um, I want to mention again like I did in my other video if you ever have any kind of, it's really any vehicle, starts to overheat never think that you can make it to make it home or make it to the next exit always pull over and have the vehicle towed especially on the M52 TU and the M54 um, I actually have two vehicles at work where the customers continued driving the vehicle and it did overheat to the point of the car shutting off and typically when that happens is a lot of damage usually you'll need an engine at that point because the sleeves and the cylinder head can lift uh, the block can warp, the head can warp, and the material actually breaks down. They do have some kits that you can do to um, fix if uh, the head bolts start to pull out, but if the sleeves are lifted or the block is warped, then or you're already at replacement of an engine. All right, let's get started. You have to remove this air, air snorkel, at least on a 3 Series, and actually that's pretty much on all of them have a similar type of setup. So I'm just going to take these plastic rivets off and pop this piece right off. I want to also thank everybody that's put a like to any of my videos and all of my subscribers. I have the electric fan, so I do need to remove this. I'm going to pop this plug off right here. I have a T25 Torx on the left and I have a plastic rivet over here. You can use some uh, side cutters to actually slide that plastic rivet out. Remove that on the driver's side. We have this long screw here on the passenger side. And this is a manual transmission, so I have the electric fan. It's going to lift straight up and out. I do have videos on how to replace or remove the mechanical fan as well. If you have an automatic transmission, you're going to have this style fan, the mechanical fan with a fan clutch. This is a 32 millimeter right here. This is a reverse thread. I do have a video with some tips and tricks on how to remove this. That's going to be installed right to your water pump right here. And you're going to have a fan shroud, which is just going to be held on by those clips as well those plastic rivets. You're going to remove this first, let it sit inside the shroud, and then take the whole thing out as one piece. Just do a quick little recap. I just spun this on. This is actually reverse thread, keep in mind. So lefty is tidy and righty is loosey. I'm spinning this on. This is the way the fan will look. You will have a shroud here if you have an automatic transmission. With the 32 millimeter, you're going to come down and catch that right there. It's going to be snug, so it's not going to want to come free. But if you hit this with a hammer straight down and slightly to the right, you can usually break that free. So with that right on that 32 millimeter nut, you would hit it right here and give that a good solid whack down. My son's sleeping, so I'm not going to give it a good hit now to either tighten or loosen it, but basically you're hitting it to the right this way, and it should pop free. 
Hopefully I didn't put that on too tight where I'm going to have to do that. Nope, oh, there it is. So once it's loose, you can usually spin it free. You know, I did actually put that on too tight, so I'm going to have to give it a hit. There we go. Alright, simple as that. Sometimes it can take quite a few hits if uh, it doesn't want to come free. They do sell a tool that will hold the bolts on the pulley. And I go to the right to take this off. If you go too fast, it will drop down, but if you have the shroud on, it will get caught inside the shroud. I don't have a shroud on this one, so it's going to fall right into my coolant bucket. There we go. So, if you have the automatic transmission, that's how you're going to remove that fan right there. This is what it looks like. Here's the water pump pulley right here. This is actually the water pump. These are the threads where the fan would sit with an automatic transmission. So we do have to take these belts off or at least loosen them. So take note of the pattern. You can see this is like a backward C. So it goes down this way. This is the backward C under the crank, power steering up this way to alternator, idler, and then back around. So if you want to make a diagram, I do also have a video on how to remove and replace the belt with tips and tricks as well. Alright, so the next step before you take the belts off, keep in mind, is to break the bolts free for the pulley. If you don't do this, then this is just going to be freewheeling and you're not going to have enough tension to loosen these. So you just want to loosen them all. This is a 10 millimeter. We're going to just do a couple of turns for each one. A little bit of rust on these so they're sticking. Okay, crack those four free so they're at least loose. Nothing's going to come apart. Make sure you can move them by hand. Yep. Most of the time on a BMW, you don't have to heat these, they'll usually crack free, but if they don't want to go, you can apply some heat very carefully to uh, get those bolts to loosen up. Now to remove the belt I need to access my tensioner which is right here. I have a cap on this so I'll have an access hole and on some of these you might also have another spot which might be like a, a Torx um, but for this application I'm going to go right here I'm going to pop that cover off this cover, if you just use a pick and catch the corner right, it's going to come right off, like that right there. So this pulley right here may be an Allen or it may be a Torx. I have, uh, this. I think this was an Allen, but I had started with a Torx, so it actually took the shape of the Torx. Also, that pulley is failing on uh, my engine so I have a new pulley that I purchased right here which I'm going to be installing which is nice and smooth that one has uh, some tone to it and the new bolt which you can get separate is actually a Torx as well so this is going to be the replacement and this I have the hydraulic tensioner now remember leverage is everything so I do have a uh, a large ratchet, a long ratchet, and I'm going to put a little bit of pressure there and just apply pressure. You can see that that's actually going to walk back. And that is under tension, hydraulic tension. I'm just going to take my finger, see if we, so you can see, and just take the belt, slide the belt right off, and then release the tension. It did get caught there. Pop that off. And that's all I really need to do to replace, if I was going to do this guy here, but you can hear that bearing is bad, or to access my water pump. I just have to let the belt sit there. I don't have to take it fully off. So now all I have to do is remove these four right here. I could take the belt off of that and just put it down to the side. So take your 
four 10 millimeter bolts out. It's gonna be a neat trick to get this water pump out as well that I'll show you. When I first started, I used to try to yank these out, but there's actually a very, very easy method to get these out. All right, most of the time now, this pulley is not going to want to come off. Actually, as you can see, I'm yanking on it, it's not going to come off. So there's also a trick to get this pulley off. I'm going to take a hammer and use caution because you can chip the edges of this here. But I'm going to not use the, the working side, I'm just going to use the side of the hammer. I'm going to just tap around this pulley until it comes free. Look at that. That just relieved any kind of rust buildup that was attached which was holding these two pieces together. It's a nice easy trick and just have to tap and spin, tap and spin. Now you can put a little bit of anti-seize on there when you go back together. But I know a lot of people damage these, you pry on them, and this is really just plastic. So you can chip these. If you do damage any of these fins, you should replace this pulley. So now we can get a good look at the water pump. It does look like I have a little bit of rust build up on the nuts here that are holding these studs in place. So you could check the shaft here. Give it a spin. If this is loose at all, you're going to want to replace the water pump. And then under here is where the weep hole would be, where you would be leaking coolant. I'm going to spray a little bit of uh, knock them loose or rust penetrant on those before I start. So I actually had a little bit of PB blaster. Oh, I guess a little bit is right. Might be empty here. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit. I'm going to let them soak for a minute. Again, if you have to, you can heat these. But I'm just going to let that penetrate and hopefully these will break free relatively easily. Most of the time they do. You don't want to snap one of these off because it would be difficult to replace. Alright, so now this is actually just a 10 millimeter as well. So I just have a bit of an extension and I'm going to go on here. Make sure you're loosening. I'm just going to crack them a little bit up, not going to, just a little pop. Now I'm going to reverse, snug it down a little bit, crack it free, and actually that released. Now I'm doing that to free up the rust. So again, you just want to crack it free. You don't want to break this off, don't use air you have it. Hear that little pop. Reverse. Tighten up just a tiny bit. Reverse again. Ooh. There goes my light. But it popped free into my coolant bucket. Alright, now I'm trying to provide enough light here so you can see. So that one loosened up, that one loosened up. These I tested before, I continued and realized they were a little snug, so I just wanted to show you that trick. Once they're loose like this, you can usually zip them off with air if you have it, or loosen them to the point where you can just take them off with your fingers. And you're just going to have four. nuts that you're taking off. I did bump myself. All part of being a mechanic though. Okay, two. I do have air tools, although I like to use, not use air tools for the videos, 
So I think most people don't have access to air. If you do, I'm sure you know how to use it and you can save some time. But at least this way, you can see that you can do this repair with just some regular tools that you could pick up at Harbor Freight. Love that store. My son liked, and I just like to walk around and check out all the tools. Last one. Okay. So now, if I just grab this water pump, watch, if I give it a tug, it's going to come right out, right? Actually, it does feel like it's going to. If I pull that, though, you might have some suction on there, too, because you have to crack the cap. You don't want to just pull that off. If there's any kind of residual pressure, that's going to be a little like a little explosion. So I'm going to pop that off. Now if I grab and tug or use a pry bar, I'm really close to the radiator here. I don't want to damage my radiator. So if I slip and pull too hard, I'm going to go right through these fins and then I'll be replacing the radiator. So there's a neat trick here. There's a little threaded hole right here and there's another threaded hole right here. Let me show you on the new water pump that I have. So right here you have a threaded hole and right here on this side you have a threaded hole. It's actually why I have these four. I keep them here to replace water pumps when I have to. Now these are see right here these came off the pulley the thread pitch of these are the same so if you need to find them bring one of these with you and match up the thread pitch you want them to be longer than the ones for the pulley let me give you an idea so probably about twice as long if you use these I don't think they'll reach so you do want something that's twice as long and a lot of times these threads are going to get damaged so you're only going to use this a couple times and then you need to discard them so there's that threaded hole and I'm just going to take this and screw it in. A lot of times you might have a debris in these holes so you can spray them out and clean them as best you can. And that will save these threads so you can use these bolts a little bit more. But you want to thread it in until it bottoms out. And it's actually going to bottom out right against the engine. Let me grab another one here. So we're going to actually walk the water pump out using these as a guide. And that's actually what these are for. I have another one on this side. I'm just going to thread that in. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Make sure you have your catch basin underneath you because you're going to lose some coolant. So now you simply have to tighten two turns or three, tighten two turns or three. One, two, three. Now that they're both bottomed out. One, two, three. One, two, three. three and you're gonna just work side to side sorry if the camera's moving have it balanced here so you can actually see what I'm doing better two three one, three I'm just gonna use these two three Oops, I'm moving that you can see right here the water pump is starting to slide out using these two as a guide. You can actually hear a little bit of the coolant leaking out. So I'm just going to continue. Try not to move the camera. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
Eventually this is going to be so loose, and I think it just popped right there, that I can just gently slide it out. I'm going to just let that drain for a second into my catch bucket. There we go. You can see that's about how far it came out on each side where it helped me walk this water pump out very, very easily. If we take a look at these two water pumps, you can see there's a difference here. It's got silver, almost uh, metallic um, casing here. I'm not sure if that's aluminum. And then this one here is actually, actually it does sound kind of metallic, but it looks kind of plasticky. And this one here is the BMW one. This is a BMW water pump. They're very, very similar. The weep hole is about the same. The threads here, if you do have a automatic, the threads are actually slightly different on the aftermarket, which was installed on this BMW. These threads are a little bit harder to actually thread on that mechanical fan. It can be done, as you saw, but uh, it was a little bit more difficult. So actually there's nothing really wrong with this uh, water pump. Actually you can see right here there's a little bit of residue. That's what you'd find if it's starting to leak out of the weep hole. So maybe I'll go ahead and install the BMW one that I have and put this one aside. Now if you did snap off one of those nuts you would have to try to replace the studs here. Um, they might come out if you double nutted them and then backed off the back nut to try to walk that uh, stud out. But if you have a lot of corrosion already, you might be drilling this out. You know, any kind of mistake and uh, it's going to cause some damage. So you better to take the time to spray some penetrating fluid on the four studs, on the four nuts, and uh, let it soak for 10, 20 minutes try to break them free, use a little bit of heat on those two again and then usually you can break them free. Too much rust, think about replacing those uh, 10 millimeter nuts. Just as a quick side note, when I've seen those engines that have been overheated, even the ones that you can save, there's actually a crossover pipe that is on, that is under the intake manifold. Here's our intake manifold right here. The crossover pipe is down far underneath close to where the water pump actually is in the back and there's like a, I think there's a bolt holding it on. It runs across and underneath the intake manifold. That pipe actually can fill with a condensate. When the engine gets so hot, the coolant will actually break down and solidify into this thick substance that's almost like a plastic, looks like a gray material and uh, that can clog uh, your heater core and uh, it can clog up that pipe. So even after repair, if a mechanic doesn't know to replace that, that pipe, you won't get any heat inside your cabin. That uh, feed is actually a feed that feeds uh, the water valve and actually provides the coolant for the heater, car, heater core that runs along underneath that intake manifold. All right, installation is actually pretty simple. I'm gonna take a little bit of coolant here and I'm going to just lubricate my seal with some of the coolant. You can use fresh coolant. I actually filled this up not that long ago when I replaced an upper radiator hose, which I have a video on if you're having an issue with that hose. So I'm just going to use some coolant. Remember that uh, the weep hole goes down. I don't really think you can install this the wrong way. I've never tried. I'm going to try. I flip it this way. No, it doesn't really line up. <laughs> you know, I always knew which way they went on, so I've never tried to put it on backwards. I guess you can't mess that up. Okay, you can wiggle that on. See, it's actually still fighting me. So, I'm going to take a little bit of white lithium, and I'm going to put that just a little bit on the outside of this gasket here. then pop that back in. Oh, 
and just give it a push. Usually if you give it a push and a wiggle, it'll pop right in. Oops. One sec. Alright, I just had to move the camera so I could stand right in front of it and give it a good push in. You can see the studs are sticking out. It's actually fully bottomed out. And it took a little bit of effort, but not really that much. If you have to lube up that seal a little bit more, you can. And then I'm going to put these nuts back on. And keep in mind these studs are... Light again. These studs are pretty small. The camera's right in the way. So you don't want to over tighten these. You just want to snug them down. That seal is doing all the work, not the pressure from these nuts. If you tighten these too much or you use air, you snap these studs off and then you're in a whole lot of hurt. One, two, three, four. If you can, never walk away from a job also. If you haven't tightened something down because you will forget. Like right now, if somebody needed me, I'd want to go ahead and tighten up these four before I walked away from this repair. Because if not, then I'd totally forget. And then I'd continue, and then I'd be driving down the road and eventually have a coolant leak, if not right away. Now this really loose. So go, I have a little bit of tension there. I'm going to stop and move to the cross section one. A little bit of tension, stop. Move to the other one. Some tension, stop. That one's nice and loose. Some tension, stop. Okay, now that they're all snug, I'm just gonna do just a quarter turn, good, or an eighth turn even. That one actually doesn't need any. That one's nice and snug. nice and snug too that's it and I'm not using a very big ratchet so I'm not able to apply a lot of force next step is that pulley this is the pulley right there and balance that I'm gonna take some copper based anti-seize try not to get it all over my camera and I'm gonna just put it right along here on the inside surface. So next time I have to pop this off, it's going to probably fall right off into my hand. The next fun challenge is lining up the holes. You can see that there's a, a separate pattern. Too close and then too far away. So you have to try to take a look and turn your water pump to where you want it. I think I'll do the two close facing up and down. So I'm going to be going that way. I'm going to take a little bit of that anti-seize and just brush a little bit onto the threads here for those four, four bolts for the pulley just because it was a little hard coming out. Just want to put a little bit on there. Okay, you want to just try to line it up as best you can and place it on. Most of the time it will stay. The question is, did you line it up right? That's my light. And you can move it around a bit because you're going to have to find that sweet spot where everything lines up. Once you get one started, and as long as you had it lined up right, the other one should be cake. Snug these down by hand. Now we can't 
tighten these until we have the tension from the belt. You have the mechanical fan, you can put a little bit of that anti-seize on the threads here too. And these threads are cut much better, you can tell already. Alright, that's on, but remember it's loose. That's a big step that I think you might make a mistake on if you're not paying attention or rushing. You throw your belt on, you're done. Well, these are going to walk off if they're not tightened up. So make sure, next step is to get that belt on, there's my light again, and then tighten these up. Now the good news is my belt didn't go too far, so it was just hanging off to the side. Just wrapped it around the pulley first, like this. Make sure that all the contacts are good down the bottom and at the crank, or else you won't be able to tension this right and then I'm just going to give it a little pull I'm going to set my tool up right here that torques to then just tension this from this side and then hook this over that pulley now that's a T50 keep in mind Let's see if I can do this without knocking the camera over come right on this side here Find that spot, apply the tension, and just slide that belt on, just like that. And then release the pressure. And then I always like to double check everything. Pop that off. Do a quick double check by putting your hand underneath the water pump, pulley over here, this should be nice and centered, check your crank, check underneath, and check your power steering, which is down over here, and just make sure that the belt is sitting correctly. Now this is where you don't want to get ahead of yourself, and make sure to snug these down. Write yourself a note if you have to, and it just snug. See that one's real loose. Tighten it till I have some tension. Snug. 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 And then I'm going to do a quarter turn. And these I'm going to do just a little bit tighter. Really give it that quarter turn. So I wouldn't want these to walk off on me. Use caution again. You don't want to over tighten these. I actually did a quick check on the specification and it wasn't really listed. So I don't have a torque spec for you. Um, I forget, there's a general rule of thumb depending on the size of the bolt. I'll have to look into that and add some info on another video sometime. I'm just going to put that cap back on. Now if these caps are missing, make sure to order and replace them, especially if you're replacing that pulley and uh, that cap is missing, dirt's going to get right in there and damage that pulley again. So you always want to make sure that these caps are installed. Now usually at this point, I will leave this open. If I have a coolant pressure tester, which I don't think I've done a video on. No, you know what I have? I did a coolant pressure test when I had an issue with this upper radiator hose where it was leaking from the little uh, bleeder screw right over here. So I show how to use that pressure tester and that's just going to verify that you don't have any additional leaks. So if you do have a pressure tester you would want to fill the system. You're going to crack this open and fill with coolant, 50-50 mix, has to be an ethylene glycol mix, it's usually the, the blue coolant, 
um, would recommend using the BMW coolant. You're going to fill it until it overflows from this bleeder screw. Put that bleeder screw back in or replace. If, the, if it's never been replaced, I highly recommend replacing that bleeder screw because it will fail and then it will fuse to the upper radiator hose from the steam that is escaping. So once this overflows, you're going to top off here until it's full. Start the vehicle, let it run, watch it, make sure it comes up to operating temp, put the heat on high, and that's going to allow the air to be removed. Now you can also do this with the cap off, engine running, wait for the thermostat to open, it's going to do a big gulp, some of it's going to drop out, it might even overflow while it's running, that's usually why I do it the other way, and once it does its big gulp and that thermostat opens, once it's up to a certain temp, you'd fill it until your float comes up to the correct level and then you put your cap on. Either way, whichever way you go, you let it cool and then crack it open and top off as needed. I think I'm going to be moving on to doing the lower radiator hose and removing the radiator next, showing you how to do that. So. I'm actually not going to be putting coolant back in. I do have some videos on how to top off and, and bleed the cooling system. So if you're still a little hesitant, uh, just check out my videos related to that. Now if you have the automatic transmission, you're going to have a shroud. So you're going to actually install the shroud, lift it up, slide this in in front of the shroud, drop them both together so everything is flush just like my mechanical fan fits into some slots on the bottom that shroud is going to also fit into the slots this can actually sit right inside up against the radiator and then you're going to carefully reverse thread so I have to go backwards this is kind of a skill you have to hold this perfectly straight up and turn apply the right amount of pressure you see how I'm walking back and forth, I think I'm caught. Once you're caught, you can spin it on. And I do have a video on how to do this, um, but I had the aftermarket water pump in and I struggled a bit because it did not want to thread on. This thread on like, threaded on like nothing. So I do have to take this back off since my vehicle is a manual with high mileage, but the good thing about a manual transmission on a BMW is they really do last. Automatics, they have a history of some problems. So if you do have a manual transmission, this is where you're going to drop your electric fan in. Keep it close to the radiator. It's going to slide into those slots and then there's a resting point right here on the radiator. And you can usually feel that it's hooked on the bottom. You would have those two fasteners, that long Torx and that plastic rivet. Plastic rivet's going to go over here. Sometimes you do have to replace these plastic rivets and that just pops in like that. Again, if you missed that earlier, I like to take these off using just some side cutters to catch them and just pry it out. And then you catch the back part and pry it out, it comes out really, really easy. Going back together, just put that like that, slide it in, lock it in. Now on the other side, you have that Torx, which goes right here. And that screws in there. It is a very long screw, so if you didn't pay attention, just keep in mind that is where that goes. I'm going to leave that partially loose because this is coming apart again. Don't forget to plug in your electric fan. I've had many people do that. That's all installed. You would have already bled it and pressure tested it, so the next step is that air snorkel. Grab that. It's going to go on just like this. Goes up to the air box. That sits right there. Again, all it is is plastic rivets. It is some specific size plastic rivets. 
So you could either have to match them up or you go to your local BMW dealer. You should be able to have them look up those parts. Just bring the last seven digits of your VIN number. And that just everything lines up, right? Pop that right in there. Put the two in across from each other. Pack that down. That's going to hold that piece right in. Half on. And it's as simple as that to replace the water pump on this particular engine. It's actually uh, one of the engines that I enjoy working on, probably because I've worked on it for so long. And if you maintain and take care of it, it should last you into a few hundred thousand miles. This one's 200 plus. Um, I didn't own this from the beginning, so this vehicle is in some rough shape. Uh, but if you do take care of it, remember you don't have a lease payment, so you're putting that money back into what's normal wear and tear. Thanks for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers, to everyone that's actually posted a like for my videos. Please do. I appreciate it very much. Keep the comments coming positive comments and uh, I know I've helped quite a few people asking me questions on their BMWs might not always have the perfect answer or it might not be the answer that you want to hear but I'll always try to give some advice when I can and in some cases I know I've helped people from around the world fix some problems and some problems that even their their local dealer couldn't solve please help promote my videos um, if you could post links on uh, any kind of social media to help promote my videos, it would be much appreciated. And uh, best wishes with your repairs.